Jack. Yeah. Yeah, I got an interesting explainer for you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you mean this one's going to be interesting? <laughs> yeah. Unlike all the yeah, others. Yeah, you said that like it was a qualifier <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that uh, that did not previously exist. <laughs> There's a feature of the James Webb Space Telescope that I haven't seen talked about much. People only just think of it as some next big telescope that's out there in space bringing us badass images. But there are certain engineering scientific features that are unique with it that I think are worth calling out. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Clark, if you can hang with me on this, all right. Uh, allow me to remind us that unlike Hubble, which orbited Earth 360 miles up, this thing is parked a million miles away in the opposite direction of the sun from the Earth. It's pretty wild. Okay. Yeah. And so it, I say parked. We're all or it and the Earth are orbiting the Sun together, and so it, so basically, if you look back in the Earth direction, the Sun will always be there. So it's it's using the Earth as sunblock. <laughs> well, it's good. it it has some motion where it is, okay, but it's not going to drift away from that location, even though there is some movement within the location. The the point is, occasionally Earth will block the Sun, right. but the value of this is you always know which way the sun is right. at all times, okay? Gotcha. It's behind you, okay? Right. <laughs> all right? I'm looking now, out to space. The only way to take good pictures. <laughs> 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 and know what they say? Like, good hey, one. Yeah, it's get, true. Get the that's sun right. behind you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So that everyone is squinting as they look in right. the camera. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so... If you're going to take a picture of something that's dim, you either have to illuminate it yourself, which we really can't do for the early universe. That doesn't work. <laughs> or you can take a long exposure to allow the light to accumulate. But while you're taking that long exposure, you can't jiggle the camera. It has to right. be perfectly, perfectly stationary. Still. So Chuck, just to repeat, we can't take a flash picture of the outer of, of, universe. Of, so right. we have to open the exposure for a long time. OK, so now watch. Uh, different bands of the electromagnetic spectrum tell us different things about the universe. All right, so if you're going to do that, you need telescopes that specialize in the chosen band. And by the way, we didn't even know light came in bands other than visible light. And somebody had to discover that. I mean, just think about it. Why would you have any inkling? Why would you believe at all? all that there was a kind of light out there that your eyes could not detect right especially if you're religious right if you're religious what god made humans and we have eyeballs to see light and how could there possibly be something we can't see all right so there's certain expectations of who and what we are as a life form that were completely overrun the day infrared light was discovered mm. Okay. And, and, and did I tell you how they, we discovered infrared? Did I tell you? Uh huh. But it was, uh, did, did we? I was William Herschel discovered okay. it. Okay. Never and, mind. Tell the story. Uh, okay. No, real quick. Well, okay. I was thinking of something else. I'm like, okay, okay. wait a minute. <laughs> like, we, so we William see. Herschel discovered right. it. And uh, how did he do it? He, he knew that Isaac Newton figured out that white light is composed of colors. You just right. pass it through a prism and it breaks it apart. So he repeated this experiment. You put a little slit of light in your room, but the whole room has to be dark so that only the spectrum shows up. All right, and you pass it through a triangle prism. You get a rainbow on your table, and there it is, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And he had the foresight to ask the question, I wonder if the different colors of light have different temperatures. Yeah, well, just to, okay. Just to even ask that question. I mean, it's just pretty, uh, pretty impressive question. Think about that. It's a simple question, maybe retrospectively obvious, but at the time, okay, so what does he do? He has a thermometer and puts it in each of the different colors of light. But wait a minute, you need a control thermometer. So he took his control thermometer, put it off to the side, just to the, just to the side of the red, okay? So that was not in the spectrum, all right? 
And he, that would presumably just measure room temperature, all right? But it was still on the table where he was measuring the rest of the temperatures. Your control has to have a minimum of variation other than the one thing you want to change, okay? So the thermometer's on the table, but just off to the side. And so there he is, he's measuring the temperature of blue and red and yellow. And, a, and what he's finding is that the thermometer off to the side is consistently measuring higher temperature than all the rest of the thermometers, hmm. all the rest of the readings that he was taking. And he said, WTF? I'm sure that's what he said, okay? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I am sure. And right after that, he went, OMG! <laughs> OMG, WTF! (laughs) All right, so he publishes this paper, uh, and it's just, it's beautiful in how he's tiptoeing around a discovery because he doesn't really know. He said, uh, could there be light that is unfit for vision? Unfit for vision. This is how he described it. That's a great description. And he, do, he does this enough, and he's, I think I've discovered light unfit for vision. You're damn right you did. And it was yeah. it's light below the red, and what do we call it? Infrared. infrared. Wow. Okay. And it's so funny. You still see the hubris of human um, uh, existence there. It's unfit for vision, not we can't see. <laughs> <laughs> we blind to this right, thing. Exactly. <laughs> it's got the problem. It's right? got the problem. Not it's us. unfit for it's us. It's unfit for vision. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way. Very good. Yeah. So so it turns out. So that's just an interesting sort of discovery experiment. And then we would learn, well, if that exists, maybe other bands of light exist. And so thus thereafter we would discover ultraviolet. Um, in, uh, uh, microwaves, radio waves, x-rays, and they each have their moment in the sun, so to speak. And that fills out the entire, what we call, electromagnetic spectrum. Only a small fraction is visible light. And so, so now you're going to say, what in the universe gives off infrared light? And you find out that things that have kind of any temperature at all will radiate in the infrared. Okay? Now, so for example, if you have an electric stove and you put it on low and turn out all the lights, can you see it? No, not if it's on low, but you put your hand on it, you'll burn your hand, okay? So Tell something's me com- about it. <laughs> Something is coming out of the stove and it's not vis- unfit for vision, right? It's infrared light, okay? And when the thing gets hot enough, it's not only giving off infrared, it'll begin to also give off visible light. Right. Okay. But if the thing is cool enough, it's primarily only going to be giving you infrared. Suppose you want to see infrared. All right. And by the way, infrared doesn't make it very nicely through Earth's atmosphere. You know how you know this? Because we have greenhouse gases that trap the infrared that is down here. Okay. So so the, the greenhouse effect are molecules that have a special relationship with infrared. And there's the ground trying to radiate infrared back into space. They said, no, you don't. And it sends it back down and accumulates. Okay. So here's the cool thing about the James Webb telescope. It has a special reflective surface on its mirrors that are tuned to reflect infrared with very high efficiency. That's number one, reflect and focus. Number two, if you're trying to detect something that is a very low temperature... What happens if you have a temperature and you're the detector? You end up detecting yourself. Exactly. Can't have that. I went searching for the universe and all I found was me. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, So you need a way to cool the telescope. So we could send up cryogenic liquids and things, but they would eventually evaporate or, or gain temperature. And that, so what we figured out to do, we, not, not I, the engineers who were tasked with this, um, that telescope has a series of thermal baffles between it and the sun. All right? And so those, just take a look at any photo of the full telescope deployed. These, these, the, they're basically screen. They're like sheets that are, that are put up, a series of, of them in the row. So sunlight comes and hits one of them, 
it reflects some back others get absorbed and gets retransmitted to the next sheet but that gets resent back there's this multiple triple reflections and at each layer the amount of heat from the sun is dramatically dropped okay gotcha. dramatic so by the time it comes out the other side is barely there at all and wow. so the temperature of the telescope can now drop to what is basically the temperature of deep space without any influence of sunlight uh, uh, increasing its its body temperature, if you will. That's, that's wild. It's totally wild. So now <clears throat> the James Webb Space Telescope can observe deep in the infrared part of the spectrum because it can. And so there you have it. That. A little, a little primer on infrared and infrared telescopes and how that works. Well, there you go, people. I hope you were paying attention because you're going to be at a cocktail party where this is going to come in <laughs> very, very handy. <laughs> I plan on using it this weekend. I'm mm. telling you right now. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's what's that skirt for on the outer edge of the telescope? There you know. You go. <laughs> uh, I suppose you didn't realize that there were baffles that actually <laughs> filter the sunlight in such a way that cools the telescope so that we're able to register the infrared without registering the heat from the telescope itself. Yes, this is the kind of stuff you learn when you're an extremely smart individual. By the way, off with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you don't have any friends left at your party ah! right? <laughs> all right that's all the time we have for this explainer chuck that was good all that was right good stuff all right neil degrasse tyson here keep looking up <laughs>